Now we're on our way to Albuquerque. Yep. We gotta figure out where to get water and fuel. Yep. All right. We'll see y'all there. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to One Strange Adventure. Welcome to the next video, and welcome to the Albuquerque Hot Air Balloon Fiesta. It was amazing. It was okay. It was amazing. It was okay. For what we got to see, it was amazing. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Before we get this video started, I just want to say thank you to our patrons. Yes, because you guys are awesome and thank you so much for your support. All right, let's get the video started. I do have a question for you. If you went to the Albuquerque Hot Air Balloon Fiesta this year, put it in the comments below and write whether or not you would return for a second time. Would you go back after experiencing it? So leave that in the comments. All right, in today's video, we are going to talk about some things that we learned while we we're at the Fiesta. Yes, because everywhere we go, we learn tips and tricks and we learn things to not do. And we scoured the internet for information the almost the entire time leading up to it while we were there. there there's a lot of videos about like being at the Fiesta, but nothing right. about like, here's what you need to know. There are some things that we needed to know that I couldn't actually find anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna help a little bit. If it changes next year, I'm so sorry, but we're gonna try. That's a good point. It, this is relevant to the experience that we had in 2022. Right. So if you're watching this in 2023, preparing for that, then it might be a little bit different, but chances are things are gonna be relatively the same. Yep. We left Colorado. We were staying at the, uh, the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Uh, we overnighted there, as you saw in our last video. If you, have, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Colorado is amazing. We're working our way down to Albuquerque. First tip, do not get there uh, at nighttime. It actually tells you when you book your ticket, it tells you in the, all the pamphlets that you get to not arrive after dark because they cannot. It's like 6 um, p.m. Yes. It, yeah. They cannot um, park you yep. once it gets dark because it's unsafe. The only lot that has a staging area where you could potentially stay uh, for a night is the south lot because yep. the south lot is massive, but you are really far away from the uh, the actual fairgrounds. But we could we couldn't find any verbiage that said, well, where can you stay if you get there after dark? Because our our GPS was scheduled to get there like five minutes before six, and everybody knows with an RV it takes longer. And so we actually ended up like getting to the area at five minutes after six. So we knew we weren't going to be able to make it to the gate. Um, so then I started scouring trying to find. Where, what, what's next? What's next? And the thing was is that uh, the people at the gates were also trying to figure out what to do. So they end up sending us down the main pedestrian entrance, which is uh, full of cones and not set up for an RV. It's nighttime. And had to make a U-turn. It was great. <laughs> so the, the one gate guard, he said, go down to the main entrance and they'll know where to tell you to go. So we did. Went to the main entrance. That guy goes, I don't know where to tell you to go. You need to make a U-turn and go out and, and go to the lot on your left-hand side. We literally had to make a U-turn. I had to move all the cones so that we could... <laughs> Yeah. Make a U-turn. That was great. Um, and then to get into that main lot, it's concrete barriers with cones in the middle. So you can't swing wide and if you can't swing low, like you can't do either. <laughs> so it was fun. But then the next morning we went to the tent to see, to be like, hey, you know, this is where we're parked. Where do we need to be? Um, we actually ended up doing really good. We parked where they would have parked, parked us. We parked where we were. We had no idea we were in the north lot, which is where we stayed. We had no idea that was the north lot. Yep. Because <laughs> we were all turned around. <laughs> and it's dark and there's no signs. <laughs> so we ended up being in the spot that we were supposed to be in. So he's like, you can just stay there. We did find out that the only overflow parking at nighttime is the south lot. Yep. And you can't park in the south lot overflow if you're scheduled to be in any of the other lots. And most, so most of the people are staging 
looking at local casinos yeah is is what so if you're driving the day of and, you, and you're going to be there late look for one of the casinos yeah um, so one of the reasons that we actually got there a little late was because we had to find water yeah uh before we went in and so that kind of leads us to our next tip. Download an app called Park Advisor. And when you do, you can actually just hit the little button that shows your location. And then it will pull up any dump stations, water fill stations, parks, um, even like rest areas, gas stations. All of that stuff is listed on there. That's how we find our Cracker Barrels, um, the things like that. And so I found the closest water fill station to the balloon fiesta because we didn't want to carry around our big tank full of water 20 gallons um, of water trying to get through all, all these roads and not know where to go so yeah. i so i just found the one that was closest it ended up being chevron the closest thing we found was that chevron and it had a water spigot had a dump station and propane fill so yeah. it was actually pretty nice the one thing i will say is uh getting in is pretty easy getting out's a little tricky because of the way the parking lot is shaped yeah. uh but totally doable our 45 foot rig we got in there and out no problems and it's like five dollars to fill up the water and um i don't know how much it was to dump because we didn't have to dump you can get water before you go well, at least that's what we wanted to do but you do have the option of getting water once you're there i wouldn't recommend going in with no water uh it's more of like a, after a couple of days you get you put your voucher out you can get water and you can um dump. you can do dump stations or you can do uh dump services and so you actually walk up to the main like host of the lot and get your vouchers. It's cash only for the dump services, the honey wagon to come around and um, for the water fill. And you ask your area host for those services and she'll, she'll put, give you your vouchers and you just tape them to the front of your rig. It was $30 to fill up your water and it's $30 to dump. get the dump service. And and they come and dump all your tanks, not just one um, right. for that. So we waited until the last possible minute to, to get them to come dump. And you don't have to be there. So like if you want to go enjoy your festivities or whatever, as long as your bays are open for them to be able to pull your, your valves, you don't have to be there when they come. Yep. Once we got to our, our lot, we, we just did a quick level th that night because of us coming in late. And so then the next morning, we actually like really leveled and, and put the buckets and stuff out. Because we didn't know if we were staying. Yeah, we didn't know if we were in the right spot. So it wasn't any point of going through the whole process if we weren't. Well, the lot we're in, the north lot, is that's just an unlevel lot. Yeah, yeah, but the other ones are. The <laughs> other ones, they come, the volunteers come and clean up those lots. Joe? It's just unlevel ground. It doesn't matter what they do. Like they would have to bring in tons and tons of dirt to make that right. level and so bring leveling blocks or pieces of wood, wood or whatever you have just make sure you have enough of for each jack and your wheels because some of the areas are very nice and don't need them very much but then other level other areas are really really unlevel so you never know where you're going to be because it's first come first park <laughs> so you don't know what area of the lot you're going to be in to know what you need leading up to it but i will say they're all the the way the they park everybody and the way the lot is sloped at least for the north lot is you're going to be nose high for pretty much for all most, of them. Yeah, for most of them. Yep. Which is a little bit easier uh, to to deal with, but it's also left to right. There's a bunch of like areas where water has run off. It can be tricky in some of the spots that we that we saw. Welcome to the Albuquerque Hot Air Balloon Fiesta. We have been here for just a day. Today's day two. Yep. And it's been amazing. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. Although it is crazy crowded. Yes. Well, it's the 50th anniversary, so. They said it's going to be like 50 times the amount of people because everybody wants to come for the anniversary. Yep, and we have the UFO getting ready to take off behind us. So and if you Yoda. Hear, oh yeah, and Yoda. So if you hear the, the fire going, you know, that's that's them getting ready to take off. Now speaking of volunteers, they come in and clean the lots and are there for the host tents and things like that. So if you um, are interested in volunteering it actually has some pretty cool perks we found out mm -hmm. you volunteer for the month leading up to the balloon fiesta so like labor day start you come in the weekend of labor day and you stay until two days past the balloon fiesta which sounds like a lot but you get to stay there for free because you're volunteering your time and you get two uh services a week so water fill or dump plus electric and so you're working from 7 a.m to 11 a.m monday through friday you have the weekends off you're basically getting all the lots ready for the campers to roll in because weeds have grown up and stuff like that so they said they're really bad with tumbleweeds 
Yeah, so you get to stay there on site for a little over a month, and then you also get to enjoy the Balloon Fiesta. So if you're interested in volunteering at the Balloon Fiesta and potentially getting it free, yeah. <laughs> which is a nice perk to it, uh, then that might be a good option for you. All right, so you've gotten to the show. You are set up. You're ready to enjoy. Guess what? You're going to wake up at 6 a.m. Doesn't matter if you want to or not. Or 5.30. <laughs> because there are helicopters and airplanes circling the fairgrounds getting ready for the morning flight. And usually it's like the news crew or the weather crew or, or something um, that's like doing the live update for the balloons, regardless if the balloons are in the air or not. Like they, they are still circling over you, at least with us in the North Lot. But it, it was pretty awesome to wake up early and you look out your window and there's balloons everywhere. Yeah, that was pretty nice. So, pretty uh, the, cool. the wake up isn't horrible either. It's not like an alarm going off on the side of your bed, but right. yeah, I it's mean, not super loud. Super you're still, you're like, what is going on out there the first day? It's an interesting experience the first yes. day or two. Yeah. So just be ready. You're yeah. going to, you're going to wake if up if you have, if you have littles. And if you're a light sleeper. So it didn't bother us at all, but just so that people that are light sleepers, just so you know, that that is a thing. Be prepared. Yep. Uh, tickets typically go on sale in January of the year leading up to the Balloon Fiesta. And when you book your ticket or you're online doing your ticket, I would highly recommend signing up to volunteer if you're interested because at that point, because the volunteer slots do fill up quick. Yeah. The Rainbow Riders is the only company that is certified to take um, paid rides uh, in the Balloon to Fiesta. To take people up. To take people yeah. up. And so when you book your balloon tickets, if you get in, because of course everybody knows it's really hard to get into the Fiesta. Uh, if you do get in, go ahead and, and try to book your spot for Rainbow Riders because those tickets also go, go away quick. And if you don't get a chance to buy them there, they did have a few spots available uh, for people like cancellations and things like that, that we looked into, but it was like $400 a person yeah. to, to purchase. So we just were not in a, position where we wanted to spend another 1600 bucks right. to ride in the balloons. I mean, it would have been awesome, but maybe next time. All right, we want to give you some pros and cons of staying in the North Lot. Yes. There's some obvious things. The North Lot is super close. Yes. Has its own little ledge you can go out on and watch the balloons. My favorite part is that when everybody's coming in, everybody has the, the general parking area, they all walk through the North Lot and go down to the main entrance gates. Just people after people after people. It's a short walk to, but, to the grounds. But to the North Lot, you have your own uh, entrance gates mm -hmm. um, that have their own security, their own metal detectors, like all of I that. I mean, it's not called VIP for nothing. <laughs> So we didn't have to wait in the line of the general public because we had our own entrance and we like, I think one or two people were in front of me at most Right. every time I went in. You do see a lot of people though because the general entrance parking is kind of near the north lot and they have to walk through like kind of on the edge of the north lot to yeah. get in. It's like a so you do way. see a lot of people kind of going back and forth. Yeah, and you're like, where are all these people coming from when you first get there? And then you realize that the parking lot is up the hill. Right. So. So Here's one of the biggest pros and cons of being in the North Lot. The fireworks were spectacular. They, it was a great show. And being in the North Lot, they actually go up like right behind the North Lot. Uh, so it's super close to your RV. So you can actually like stand out in front of your RV and get beautiful pictures and videos like Carol, Carol got. Like yeah. they're gorgeous. I mean, it is such a cool experience, especially when you have a side patio. People were putting their chairs up on their roofs, like just to watch the shows and stuff like that. The downside is 
the fireworks are right behind your <laughs> RV. on two different levels one if you have kids or dogs that are scared that's, of yeah. fireworks or loud booms that's a problem it was loud it was shaking it was shaking our rv which meant that luna the comet didn't care so much but luna was starting to shake because at, you know the first night she was fine the second night she got a little bit more timid by the third time that they went off she was shaking she was like what is this that keeps disturbing me every single day yeah. so it, it can become loud. a problem if they're not used to it so just keep that in mind because they are very loud and they're booming right over your head and then secondly on top of them being loud the depending on the way that the wind is blowing the ash and pieces of the fireworks actually fall all around you. We have chunks of fireworks landed on our RV. Yeah, and then Michaela was actually sitting on the side patio working on schoolwork uh, while she was watching the fireworks and pieces were landing in her lap. Luckily so. they were not still on fire, it was just the ash part of it, but she's got hunks of, of fireworks that are like this big landing on the side patio and she sent us pictures of it because we were down on the field right um, when that was happening it was it was pretty insane like yeah. the, i've never been so close to fireworks that you have chunks of cardboard from the mortar shells mm -hmm. like actually falling yeah at your feet now granted it is spectacular it's an amazing show and they do a great job it, you have fireworks going on the north lot you have fireworks going on the back side of the field and they coordinate with each other and so it, it is an amazing show but just keep that in mind if you're in the north lot because they are right there they start when the wind is nice but that doesn't mean the wind stays nice the entire time so they ended up blowing directly at us it was really cool and it was kind of frightening just keep that in mind if you're going to be in the north lot yeah. Another pro to the north lot though is that when the balloons come up um, off the field they float right over the north lot. Oh yeah because of the way the box is. Because of the way the box is and so we woke up to spectacular balloons just overhead <laughs> and landing on the field behind us for the competitions. They sort of come down and then they'll go back up when it's their turn to go back to the field for the competition rides. So it was pretty neat. I know they also land in the south lot as well so if you want balloon like close interaction with balloons coming down around you those are the two lots I think that are the best for having that close proximity to the balloons. On the, another con to being in the VIP North is we stayed there for nine days and it cost us $900 to stay yes. there. It it's $100 a night to boondock. Yep. Plus you're paying for your uh, water and dump service. If you need it. If you need it. And then of course you, you know, normal things, food and, yep. and all then, the stuff you want to buy at the balloon fiesta, it can add up quick, especially, and that's why we said like, we're not going to spend another $1,600 on a balloon ride because we've already put a thousand into it. It can be expensive, uh, to stay, to go to the fiesta or more particularly stay in the lot that we yeah. were in. Doing it again, I think I would choose the North lot just because of I, I really did enjoy the experience in that area. Getting out of the parking lot could be tricky if you were trying to leave when everybody was coming in for the evening show. So like we wanted to go to dinner. So we, yeah, had, getting to back to, was we horrible. had to try to get through all that traffic. But I'm sure that the same traffic is for all the other lots as well because there's parking all around it. And so I'm sure there's the same problem no matter which park, which area you park in. Right. We, we just didn't get to experience the other lots to know if, if that's for sure a thing or not. So. Yep, that's it on VIP North lot. And then we got a couple other tips for you. And the no, there's no granite to it. Like no, I'm saying like we had to pay for our truck and our RV. Right. This is all together, but you have like no space. You got like 30 square feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So who knew they had an RV show here at the uh, Balloon Fiesta? It's, it's all vans, but still. Pretty cool. All right, so this next uh, tip for attending the Balloon Fiesta is kind of a two-parter. Yes, part one, download the app. Yes, ABQ Balloon Fiesta. Uh, International. International I mean, Balloon Fiesta. Yeah. So it's it's in the App Store. ABQ International Balloon Fiesta. They also do live um, like live feed the entire time too, so you can actually go to their YouTube channel if you don't want to do the app. So it's not available for you. You can you can see the live feed, but the app was tremendous um for as far as help goes when it comes to the delays and, well the scheduling in general yeah the scheduling and then more particularly the delays which you know you're trying to wake up super early to see the balloons take off and then all of a sudden there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a wind delay. delay or a lightning delay or something like that it um it tells you it will give you the alerts if you want it to but it will tell you if there is a red flag which means that the balloons can't go up and then when it's projected to to be lifted so if they think the storm's gonna pass or what have you it also gives you the list of all your pilots and their backgrounds and what type of balloon they fly and things like that so if, if you're like Spring. me and you like the informational side of the fiesta it gives you that list you can also create a schedule on the things that you want to go see so like if you want to see some of the competition rides um it tells you when those are and and you can plan your day based on what you actually want to go see here's another reason to download the app the weather in albuquerque was unpredictable and uh, at least half of the balloon events that were scheduled during the course of the time we were there were canceled because of either, either wind or rain or like lightning. a storm rolling yeah. and lightning right. rolling in fact we were out on the field i believe this was friday evening we were going out there for the evening glow uh, the balloons were going, were getting inflated and everything was going good and a storm came out of nowhere. What a fantastic job! <laughs> Uh, and it was severe enough to put emergency evacuation and shelter in place. place alerts on our phones and everybody's phones went off and the field cleared. Yep. So it it's unpredictable, it can be severe and you wanna be able to stay on top of that. So it was unfortunate that that many events were canceled during the 50th anniversary of the balloon fiesta, but- It's uncontrollable. Like, it's yeah, not, they, you can't it's control like, it. You can't really be mad at, about it. It's, it's definitely understandable, but we wanna, we wanna make sure that you know that it is a real possibility that you could put money into this thing and only see a couple of shows. Right. So. And so for us, we booked all nine days because we didn't know what to expect and mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure we were there from beginning to end and try to see what we could and learn as much as we could and figure out the best plan for the next time we go. And so we did learn a lot. And yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure this doesn't even cover half of it. This is just what we could jot down at the time of, of the learnings. So you obviously increase your possibility of seeing all the shows if you're there longer because of the weather. But if it's like clear days, like four days maybe, I think getting there on a Thursday and leaving on Sunday, more than enough time to actually enjoy the fiesta enjoy all the festivities i'll tell you the uh, fireworks show and the drone show was actually really cool too it's the exact same show every single night right uh, so you're not going to miss anything different by not being there during the right. the week thursday through sunday i think is probably more than sufficient time to enjoy the balloon fiesta and if you come in the weekend before so you're there uh, the weekend like get there the saturday and sunday that show is the same the following weekend mm -hmm. they try to they try to make sure that it's you know the same things going on multiple times even for the like the, the glows and the um the competitions and stuff they had it multiple times right so that people could could make it i think that's all our tips uh i'm sure there's like she said there's plenty more that we could share with you yeah. or that we just didn't experience and there's a lot more learnings out there for us yeah and if you have learnings for us or you want to share them with the community please list them in the comments um mm -hmm. we, we try to read every single comment that comes through and answer as we can but if you just have a tip for us we love to hear it because we we will eventually be back uh, it's not in our books for the next year but we never know what we're going to get into so leave those tips for us um down below hey everyone sadly it's the last day it also happens to be the prettiest day <laughs> True that. 
So, yeah. got blue skies. There is still some clouds, but blue skies. But it's been raining all nine days. Yep, it has rained. That some event has been canceled because of rain or wind. Every day. Every single day we've been here. So we have a bunch of learnings. I hope you guys got something out of those and uh, can can apply those if you if you're thinking about coming here next year. It's, it's definitely a great event, and I would definitely come back. Um, I don't know how many days I would book yet. It, I guess it would depend on our schedule, but right. we, we were here for nine days and it was fine. Like we, we did one fill up and one dump. So it was fine and we were able to you know, make it through with our generator and the batteries and all of that good yeah. stuff. Uh, hopefully next time we have solar so we don't have to run the generator um, right. to, to charge batteries because we really only needed it like three days. All right. So. All right, well, we're wrapping up. We're heading down to White Sands National Park. Yes and uh, see what type of stuff we can get into down there. Yep, just for a few days and then we start our trek to Georgia. Yep, all right. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, make sure you subscribe. And please ring the bell so you get notified when we release our next video. Until the next strange adventure. Keep making your own. Thanks.